Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Easy Online English. And today we have a part two video of our Big Bang Theory series. And in this video, we are going to work with Leonard and Sheldon. They are two PhDs, if you don't remember, and they are having lunch in the cafeteria. So let's see what happens in this scene. Let's go. If you want to know the translation in your language, be sure to check the translated subtitles here. Here's the problem with teleportation. <laughs> Lay it on me. Here's the problem with teleportation. The two guys are eating lunch when Sheldon abruptly begins a conversation about teleportation. Teleportation is a common theme found in science fiction books and shows like Star Trek. It is a process of transporting matter through space without a vehicle, like a car or an airplane. Lay it on me. <laughs> Leonard is kind of confused at Sheldon's sudden statement, but instead of questioning him, he just says, lay it on me. This expression is actually from the 1960s. It is an older expression that means just tell me what you have to say. Assuming a device could be invented, which would identify the quantum state of matter of an individual in one location and transmit that pattern to a distant location for reassembly, you would not have actually transported the individual. Assuming a device could be invented, which would identify the quantum state of matter of an individual in one location and transmit that pattern to a distant location for reassembly, you would not have actually transported the individual. So Shelton launches into a long explanation about teleportation. The language he uses is very academic. He begins his explanation saying, assuming, and he uses this word to set up a condition in which teleportation is real so he can analyze it. It is very similar to using the word if, but when he says assuming, he is saying, if we all assume, or if we all agree. He also uses the phrase quantum state to describe the atoms that are arranged in some form of matter. You would have destroyed him in one location and recreated him in another. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> You would have destroyed him in one location and recreated him in another. He concludes that teleportation is actually a form of destruction and not travel. A person would have to be deconstructed and then reconstructed in a new place. How about that? <laughs> Leonard says, how about that? This is a very natural expression in English. It is used to express surprise at something impressive. However, the way Leonard says it is very sarcastic, implying that he doesn't find this conversation interesting at all. Personally, I would never use a transporter because the original Sheldon would have to be disintegrated in order to create a new Sheldon. <laughs> Would the new Sheldon be in any way an improvement on the old Sheldon? <laughs> Personally, I would never use a transporter because the original Sheldon would have to be disintegrated in order to create a new Sheldon. Sheldon doesn't seem to notice that Leonard is not interested in this conversation. He just keeps on talking. This is actually a very common trait of Sheldon's. He mentions that he would have to be disintegrated. This word means completely broken down into pieces. Would the new Sheldon be in any way an improvement on the old Sheldon? 
Leonard decides to make a quick joke. He asked if the new Sheldon would in any way be a better one than the one he is currently talking to. Would there be any way is a polite way of asking, is there a possibility? For example, would there be any way that I could get some help? No, he would be exactly the same. <laughs> that is a problem. <laughs> so you see it too. <laughs> no, he would be exactly the same. Again, Sheldon doesn't realize the meaning of Leonard's words. That is a problem. <laughs> Leonard continues joking, saying that not improving on the old Sheldon would be a problem with the concept of teleportation. So you see it too. Sheldon doesn't get this joke at all. To describe this situation, you could say that the joke went over his head. This means that he completely missed it. Dr. Hofstadter, Dr. Cooper, Dr. Dr. Gablehauser. <laughs> Gentlemen, I'd like you to meet Dennis Kim. Dennis is a highly sought after doctoral candidate and we're hoping to have him do his graduate work here. Dr. Hofstadter, Dr. Cooper. Dr. Gablehauser is the chair of their department at the university. He walks up to their table and addresses them formally using their professional titles, Dr. Hofstetter and Dr. Cooper. Dr. Gablehauser. Leonard and Sheldon respond together using his title. This is actually a quick and formal way to greet another person in English. Gentlemen, I'd like you to meet Dennis Kim. Dennis is a highly sought after doctoral candidate and we're hoping to have him do his graduate work here. Dr. Gablehauser introduces them to a new candidate for their department. He is highly sought after. This means that other universities are seeking him for their departments. He is a popular person in the academic field. He is beginning his graduate work and graduate work is a general term for any academic degrees studied after the standard four-year bachelor degree. Graduate work, very impressive. And he's only 15 years old. Not bad. I myself started graduate school at 14. Graduate work, very impressive. Leonard notices that Kim is very young. So he remarks that it's very impressive that he is beginning his graduate work. And he's only 15 years old. Dr. Gaberhauser reveals that not only is he looking for a university to study his doctorate, but he's actually 15 years old. Not bad. I myself started graduate school at 14. Sheldon then reveals that he too started graduate work young However, he mentions this in a very condescending tone, saying he began one year earlier at 14. Well, I lost a year while my family was tunneling out of North Korea. Advantage, Kim. <laughs> well, I lost a year while my family was tunneling out of North Korea. So Kim reveals then that he would have started sooner, but he lost one year because his family was escaping from North Korea. Sheldon just stares at him. Sheldon's intelligence and achievements are a point of pride for him, but he cannot compete with a story like Kim's. Advantage, Kim. <laughs> While Sheldon is speechless, Leonard decides to step in and say, advantage Kim. This is a sports expression, meaning that Kim has scored a point or he is ahead of Sheldon. Advantage Nadal. Well, I lost a year while my family was tunneling out of North Korea. <laughs> advantage Kim. <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you guys so much for watching another video here on Easy Online English. And before I teleport out of this video, I wanted to let you know that we have a part one for you to watch if you haven't watched it yet. So go ahead and click here and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.